Hello, my name is Mark Lingatel. I'm a CAM application specialist here at Hawker Systems. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can program a continuous pocket or a continuous slot. Uh, so what I'm referring to is what we see on screen. I have a really basic uh, representation of a continuous pocket, continuous slot. It's basically a feature that runs the entire circumference of your part with no beginning and no end. So really, how would you choose any of those edges? What would you select here to define that as a feature? Well, uh, I'm putting this on a mill turn. So we're gonna have some rotary ability on this machine as well. And in terms of my setup, I have my mill part set up on the main face there, which is the same as the turning setup for any kind of you know uh, milling or turning in that direction. But because we're going to do something with the tool coming from the radial, I need a mill part setup that has a direction that's radial. So in this case, that's what I have under my mill part setup too. So all my tools will come from that direction. And really all this is defining is that on the turret of this mill turn, I have a live tool that's pointing in the radial direction. So that is where I'm going to add the feature. Now the feature we're talking about is this rotation, this rotated feature. This is essentially a wrapped feature because it is, it's a pocket that's wrapped around the center axis. So we'll define it as such. So I'm just going to right click on mill part setup two, wrapped feature. And the wrapped feature interface is a little different than the main two and a half D or three axis features, uh, only because it has this kind of lower section here, but it all works the same way as what you've seen on the two and a half D side. We're going to define this as a wrapped pocket, although we do have the ability to do other types of wraps. Really here, I'm just going to do a wrap pocket because I have a flat bottom and I have some vertical walls. So that is a pocket. Uh, in terms of strategy, this is a, rev a revolved part. This is a wrapped feature. I'm not looking to finish those walls. I probably don't really need to do any rest milling on this either. So I'm just going to do this as a course. I just want to get that roughing toolpath added and that's it. Uh, and then the, uh, the spindle I'm putting this on it is a mill turn. So I'm just going to say we're working on the main spindle at this point. It's this lower section that makes this a wrapped feature. So the profile, I could grab some sketches or I can drive everything by the face. And since this was a wrapped face, I'll just click on that. And you can see that it understands it as a wrapped pocket based off that face, which gives me the outer boundaries there. They're not even connected. Again, there's no beginning or end on this, but the fact that it just captures those as the outside edges of this continuous face, for me, this is exactly what I would want to be able to do. I don't want to have to do any sketching to get this to work. I just want to drive everything by the actual geometry on screen. So similar to what we would do with pocket, I have an end condition. And in the end condition, I can either put in a value or again, just grab that face. And because again, that is a revolved face, it understands that the, uh, the height that I'm defining here is a radial height. So it knows to go from that face to that face, essentially. Okay, so I'll click the green check mark there. I have my wrapped pocket. I've defined it with my core strategy, which should generate that uh, roughing operation. I'll just go to generate operation plan. There's my rough mill. I'll generate my toolpath. And essentially what we'll see is a toolpath that does a pocket as if it's wrapped around center axis there. So I have my entry, I'm doing a pocket out, and then there's my exit, which just leads off the wall there. So what that looks like in simulation, if I could just bring this on screen. Now in this orientation, in this mill part setup too, we're talking about doing live tooling, so that's why the Z is pointing radial. That is the tool direction, Z axis is always tool axis. So if I just play this through, we'll see that it is actually moving the part around, And it's essentially just going to mill that pocket as if it was milling a regular pocket. It's got step overs, it's got step down, it has all the same sort of controls you would get from pocket. If this was a profile, I would get the same sort of lead in, lead out controls as I have for regular profiles. Um, I can do the same sort of two and a half D work I'm, I'm used to doing just around the rotary axis. It's a really good feature if you've got live tooling on your lathe or you've got a mill turn uh, that has this, uh, this ability to uh, rotate as well as mill. Any questions of this, just give us a call on the main tech line. If you like these videos, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.